Hello, I'm Zakira. I am an artist and writer. I run a small art shop and sometimes, a lot of the times, most of the time, I like to overthink about everyday things. This is a month in my life of creative pursuits and deep thoughts. Won't you join me? The month of April started with packing up some orders. I ran a five-day spring cleaning sale to help clear out some inventory, and my incredible supporters really showed up. I just received my largest single order ever. The packing slip is two pages long. Y'all are gonna make me cry. Thank you, thank you so much for the support. And they left me this super sweet message. Let's get it packed up. And Steve says hi back. Oh, uh, yeah, yo, what's up? I love and feel very fortunate to be able to print and manufacture most of my items myself in studio, like all of my art prints and most of my stickers and stationery. But the only drawback, other than just the obvious part of the labor or having to be your own printer technician, is that it's hard to know when to let go of things. Because it is so convenient to print things in small batches, I had accumulated over a hundred product listings on my shop and that is a lot to keep track of and organize. Most of the time if you went on my shop you would see so many items out of stock that I just didn't have the time to restock. A couple of times I have accidentally overstocked my website and ended up having to print items on the spot when an order came in, which I'm very <laughs> grateful that I'm able to do. But it's also just kind of a place you never want to be because you never know if like something's gonna go wrong with your printer. So I realized it was really time to let go of some of the older collections in order to make room both physically and mentally for new collections. I made the decision to discontinue a ton of items from my shop in May. So from my sort of small business goals point of view, April was really focused on just clearing out inventory and doing a lot of reflection and planning for the future. Currently, I'm shooting to have a couple of launches this summer and fall, which I'm very excited about, but I also just have a ton of work ahead of me. I'm still in the very early stages of production, and I'll keep you guys updated as things come together, so be sure to subscribe. And you can also follow me on Instagram if you're on there, because I often give updates pretty frequently through my stories. These stamps are so pretty! There's a short couple weeks in springtime where the horizon of trees looks like autumn. The yellow flowers of maple and oak trees look so much like changing leaves from far away. Except unlike fall, the air smells sweet, the ground is coming to life, the birds are returning to the neighborhood and waking me up at 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it's hard to not feel inspired by springtime, I think, even if you spend most of your time cooped up indoors like I do. But getting outside and touching some dirt is always welcome after a long, cold winter.
I got a lot more involved with gardening in the last couple years. I am definitely no expert. I require a lot of help to keep things alive, which thankfully my housemates kind of collaborate with me with the garden. But when I was going through some hard times, gardening provided a pretty healthy distraction. And there is something very inspiring about watching things grow and tending to them. I'm always amazed by the balance of nature, how it can be so soft and delicate and easy to kill, and yet so persistently resilient. It's sort of a juxtaposition and yet nature just does it so flawlessly. I hope one day to be able to make some artwork that captures this concept. The ideas are kind of brewing in the back of my mind, but they're not quite there yet. Starting seeds and tending to the little baby seedlings is my favorite part of gardening. Some seeds are very difficult to germinate, at least for me, and seedlings in general are just so tender and easy to damage or kill. And yet, every year when it comes time to pull some weeds outside, lo and behold, a few rogue tomatoes or radishes are sprouting all by themselves. Seeds that were dropped from last year's plants, which managed to survive the harsh winter, the hungry animals, weeks of drought, and the wrath of my shovel turning over the soil a few weeks before. These quote-unquote wild seedlings always grow stronger than my cultivated and babied ones because they're fully acclimated to the outside and their stems go so deep into the soil where the seed got buried. They're such a strong little reminder of how much life wants to live. And I suppose, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Perhaps we all should aspire to be a bit like the tough little tomato seed who fought through months of hardship in order to one day see that warm spring sun. The seed family is growing! You can really see them from the back. Letting the seasons inspire my artwork and creative flow is also something I've been embracing lately. This year, the seed starting season in particular inspired a little collection of artwork. It all started with this one tomato seed packet painting I did, and right after painting it, I just, I got the itch, I got the spark. <laughs> I just wanted to keep painting more and more seed packets, and it became a little nighttime sketchbook practice routine to chill out with, and I started making making shorts out of them, which I made a playlist for. I'll link it in the description if you're interested. I'll talk a bit more about this seed packet collection and show more of the art in my next video, but I'll tell you for now I am up to seven seed packets and I just might do more. I mean, there's so many seeds out there, so many wonderful plants. For the next week or so, I packed some more orders as they came in and took care of a bunch of boring admin stuff, like organizing spreadsheets and receipts. I was fortunate enough to sell off most of my old stock as well as most of my limited edition spring collections during March and April, which I'm super grateful for because it allows me to reinvest that income back into the business and start to expand and experiment and develop new ideas. I just finished the five day spring cleaning sale on my shop, so I'm just retaking inventory. I already purchased some new papers and other materials to begin developing product ideas that I've had floating in my mind for so long, and I'm so excited to be able to start working on it in May. It is very late at night, but I wanted to do some painting and sometimes you must seize the urge. Urgh. Every month I send out a newsletter and I give a prompt word for that month called hashtag Zekira prompts, where people can paint something inspired by the prompt or draw or sketch or sculpt or write. Uh, all mediums are accepted. And the prompt for April is urban. And I just had this idea in my mind of 
shoes hanging from power lines because I feel like shoes hanging from wires is just such an urban thing. I remember seeing them all the time as a child and the older kids would tell me stories about what they mean. A lot of them were kind of spooky and kind of scary and after doing a bit of research on them, some of the common superstitions or beliefs of what they mean are pretty unpleasant. You know, things like uh, gang territory markers, even things like uh, where to buy drugs. But they've actually never been proven and there is no like verifiable backstory about what the meaning behind shoes on wires is. It's kind of an urban legend that continues to persist. I was just doing some research on them and I found so many different meanings. Some of them were quite beautiful, like celebrating life milestones when people uh, graduate or, or get married or whatnot, and also uh, from memorializing loved ones who have passed. I think that was probably one of my favorite stories I came across while researching. The shoes of the person who passed would be thrown over the power lines because that is where their spirit now walks, closer to heaven. I added some text to this piece. It's something that I've been doing here and there in recent times with certain artworks. Just adding a poem or a few lines of text. As both a visual artist and a writer, my passion has always lied in marrying the two together. Whether that has been through books or comics or these YouTube videos, I can't do one without the other. I always end up bringing them together. A picture speaks a thousand words, but when paired with the right text, it keeps on speaking, even when you stop looking at it. My studio is an absolute mess right now. I haven't tidied in probably like two or three weeks. And it's all thanks to this video right here. I was working on this video for so long. So for the, like the last couple weeks, I was just like every day like, I gotta get it finished. I finally got it finished. It's finally out. So now it's time to do some caretaking for my space. And I'm actually thinking about like rearranging some of the things in my studio. It's not a huge space. So, and so I think the way I have it right now kind of maximizes the space, um, but we'll see, you know, maybe there's another way. I'm thinking of moving this table like here. I have an easel right there, which I've just never used <laughs> because I don't, I don't paint on canvas, but I kind of want to, like I want to, I want to get into that. Oh, also I learned about, I learned about rug punching and I don't have like all the tools for it, but I kind of did some makeshift stuff and because I just really wanted to try out the technique of like punching. So I just whipped this together. It's supposed to be a heart, but the loops are so long and uneven. It just looks like a blob of red.
All right, I'd say that's tidy enough for now. Uh, right now I have to take some pictures of my hedgehog painting to post on social media and on my portfolio. So let's do that. I have to tape down my brushes so that they don't roll off the table. Anything for the picture. Alright. If you don't know, I'm working on creating a calendar for 2024 featuring forest animals. This hedgehog is one of the illustrations for it. By the way, uh, comment below if you have a suggestion for a forest animal I should do. I got a lot of suggestions from previous videos, but I still can always use more. So if you have a forest animal you think I should paint and include in the forest animal calendar that I'm making, comment below. One funny part about being a YouTuber is sometimes you look back on the footage and notice things you didn't in the moment. As I was editing the footage for wrapping up this order, I realized it looks like I accidentally included an extra print. The customer only ordered one copy of the cherry mermaid drink, but seems like I put two. Unless I ended up taking the second one out off camera, which I completely don't remember. Maybe, maybe not. But hey, if I am to make a mistake, I'd much rather it be adding an extra something than forgetting to put something in. This particular order was getting sent quite a long way to another country, so hopefully the customer enjoys it. I always have this whole just pile of wires on the floor. And it's so ugly and so tangled and I want to fix it, but I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Like, how do you organize cables on the floor? In the last week of the month, I decided to rearrange my studio. I had no plan, zero plan. <laughs> decided to just completely wing it. I made sure when I first moved in here that all of my furniture was either on wheels or fuzzy sliders because it makes it super easy to move things around and doesn't scratch the floors. I actually kind of like this place for the desk. I like that I can reach everything. Like all of my art supplies I can reach from here. I can use this to put like a tripod on for filming, but it looks terrible. <laughs> like my room looks so squeezed right now. Funny enough, I never actually moved the furniture since I moved in here <laughs> because despite being an artist, I've always been a lot more function over form with my space. I look for efficiency and if it works, then why change it? <laughs> but ever since designing and building my shelves last year, which you can see on the wall in the corner, I've had this craving to keep tending to my space and trying to build upon it and update it bit by bit. And now, this guy grows. If your space is inspiring, you will feel inspired. This is my fancy easel. As I've found, you really don't need a big space or an expensive space or a fancy space. Sometimes all you need to do is move some furniture around and voila! inspiration will shine on you. When I sat down at my art desk in its new position for the very first time, I opened the window and I looked out and this rainbow greeted me. This is my new view! My new painting view! It was such a wonderful surprise and I choose to take it as a good sign that this rearrangement is a good thing. Mm. 
I really need some like nice drapes. It's so plain. <laughs> My windows are so plain. But it's getting pretty cozy in here and I like it. Now I need to edit the photo for my hedgehog painting. Then I'm going to post it on social media and download all of the Zakir Prompts artwork for this month. I decide who I'm going to feature in my newsletter. And then once all that is done, I am going to swing over there and do some painting for the night. First day working with a new setup and I have a bottle of prosperity charm to make. For most of my life, I viewed my space as a place that's meant to serve me. But one day, I was actually sitting in this room and it was an absolute mess and I was just sitting there contemplating life, you know, as you do. And I was looking around and I was like, you know what? This space is my friend. It keeps the rain off my head, my body warm in the winter. It gives me safety and inspiration and the ability to create my art and share my stories with you all. Our spaces do so much for us and ask for so little in return. And a lot of the time, all we do is complain about how small it is or find its flaws. And I mean, I still have dreams of one day having having a big, beautiful studio, maybe somewhere in nature. But at least now when I clean or organize, I try to not see it as a chore, but rather as taking care of an old friend who's always been there for me. And in this case, with doing a small rearrangement of the furniture, I like to think I'm giving my old friend a much needed refreshment. that this is all dry. It is ready to be packed up. And I actually sold this to someone in person because I had a charm on my bag and they were like, ooh, that looks really cool. And I was like, yeah, you wanna buy one? <laughs> and they did, so. And a book order. And this book actually comes with a QR code sheet, which if you scan the QR codes, they unlock some secret -y secret videos that have me narrating each of the 12 stories in this book as well as showing the footage of me illustrating it. Oopsie. This book was the last order to wrap for the month, and with the last couple days in April, I prepped for May. And I think May is the month for mermaids, so I'm going to do a mermaid special, as I'm calling it, where newsletter subscribers can get a free mermaid print with any physical purchase. I'm going to give them a special claim code that they can use to get a free print during the month of May. And before we conclude this month and this vlog, there is one very important thing left to do. So, Steve. Yeah? What do you think of the new room arrangement? Hmm... Well, let me inspect it. <laughs> this plant has no smell, Zaki. Steve, it's an aloe. Hmm. Glowy objects. Hey, 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 well, what's up with this guy? Oh, that's just a Pikmin. Are, are, are you trying to replace me, Zaki? What? Of course not, Steve. You could never be replaced. <laughs> Uh, that's a canvas, Steve. You've never painted on canvas before. Yeah, I know. So what are you gonna paint on it? Well, I'm not sure yet. Whales. Paint whale. New art desk placement. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, guess it's pretty good. You left stuff in that chair, Zaki. Yeah, I know. I, I it was just, you know... You gotta be clean if you wanna be a movie star. Come on, Zaki, get it together if you wanna make videos. You gotta be clean and aesthetic, like me. I'll try to remember that. So, Steve, what's the verdict? Well, hmm. 
Well, you want my honest critique, Zakira? Um, of course, sure. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, go easy on me. It's just no room. Well, alright then. It needs more whales. Okay, whales or not. I hope you guys enjoyed spending some time with me this month and getting a look into the comings and goings of being an artist and a small business owner and apparently tomato seedling romanticizer. If you did, drop a comment down below. I always love to hear from you guys. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. If you'd like to support my work and pick up some cool artsy goodies at the same time, please do head over to my shop at zekir.com and have a look around at my wares. I have all the links down in the description box. And if you're a fan of the videos and would like to support it more directly, consider giving a super thanks by hitting that little heart icon under this video. Donations are always put directly into this channel and helps me to continue making these videos so i really appreciate the support thank you so much for watching and listening if you want to keep on watching i'll have a playlist on screen full of chill art videos a lot like this one and until next time stay awesome stay inspired always see ya